Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all this morning. Thank you very much for attending our session. This is uh, going to be a very good session this morning. I'm very pleased that uh, Craig, Clay Gregory, the President and CEO of the Napa Valley Destination Council, is here today um, to share with you some of the successes that they've had in Napa Valley with their Tourism Improvement District. I was going to kick it off this morning and give you a little bit of background and let you know what's, what these districts are explain to you how they work and how they're formed, and then I have some quick case studies to show you what was done on a statewide basis in California, as well as some of the local districts that have been formed. So what do we call these things? Tourism improvement districts, tourism business improvement, <coughs> business improvement districts, I can't even say it. <laughs> business improvement districts, TINs, TINs, TNBs, uh, you name it, they've got a lot of different names, they're all the same animal. And they essentially are an assessment on hotels that create stable funding for tourism promotion. They come out of the bid world. And many of you will have and have business improvement districts in your states and your cities, and those go by a lot of different names, community <coughs> improvement district, special improvement district, business improvement district. They are a very similar type of district. They are an assessment on businesses or an assessment on properties that raise money to provide improvements. So some bids, some traditional bids do marketing, but they really are not tourism improvement districts. So what are these? These are assessments on lodging businesses, typically not other businesses. It has been mostly limited to lodging. Some places have looked at assessing attractions, some have considered restaurants, but have not included them. And we can talk about that more maybe even in a discussion session. But really this is an assessment on lodging businesses. Two different ways to levy the assessment. That is, on gross revenue of hotels or on a fixed rate per room per night. So 1%, 2%, much like your accommodations tax, or $1 per room per night, or $2 per occupied room per night. So those are sort of the assessment formulas. The lodging businesses pass that on to their customer the way they would with a lodging tax, and the funds come back to the CVB to provide promotion and marketing. What they do is they provide a stable funding source. But who knows the difference between an assessment and tax? I don't see any of my students here from CDME. Clay, you don't count. <laughs> Can't answer that. Anybody else? Assessment, assessment is voluntary. A lot of people think that. No. No. An assessment is a mandatory levy, like a tax is. Clay, you want to take a shot? <laughs>
We did some survey work in California of the tourism districts there, asked them a number of questions. One thing we asked them is, why did you form? And you can see, because their budgets were reducing. Pretty obvious, right? Budgets are reducing. Or some, look at that, 32%, no tourism funding. We've had bureaus just decimated it up and down the state, even before these came into effect, cities and counties cutting their budgets to zero. Who initiates these? And you can see it's a, it's a variety of folks. Sometimes it's a city or county that starts the effort. Uh, oftentimes it's a local DMO, or even the lodging industry coming together and saying, we'd like to see this happen. The steps to form these, essentially the first is to get enabling legislation put in place. And whether that's done on a statewide basis, or whether your cities have a local home rule authority to be able to pass an enabling ordinance like this, essentially you need an enabling statute that says these are the procedures you have to follow locally to put one together. Once you do that, it really is about reaching out to your stakeholders, whether that's uh, the lodging community, certainly, but other members of the hospitality industry, other members of the tourism industry, uh, other stakeholders within your GMO, to really talk to them about what this is, getting their input. Uh, we've actually done a series of, uh, in different destinations, a series of focus groups, one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, anything to really get that feedback as to what they'd like to see, what this rate might be, what kinds of things will be funded with this. And uh, Clay's going to talk to you about the exciting things really that they've done in Napa, really one of the uh, best performing districts in the state. Then from there is really developing the plan, looking at the assessment formula. Um, are you going to assess the lodging industry only or look at other businesses as well? What's that assessment going to look like? Do you have benefit zones? The laws allow for separate benefit zones where folks can pay at different rates. If you're funding a convention center or marketing of a convention center, it's not uncommon to have folks near the convention center. Hotels near the convention center paying at a different rate than hotels further away. Um, developing those budgets and programs and then taking that back out to uh, the hotels and stakeholders to really uh, get their support. Then whatever your local law says as it relates to the process, there usually is some sort of approval mechanism on behalf of the hotels, whether that's a petition process or a balloting or a protest procedure. Um, essentially, you have to go through that. Um, once that's done, then there are public hearings before the local government. The whole process takes about six to 12 months. Uh, here was uh, in the looking at the, the tourism bids in California, we also looked at the time frame, and you can see 65% of them were right in that time frame. Uh, some were under six months, which was uh, very, very quick. And you can see at the end there, fewer uh, over 18 months. We just finished uh, the district in Los Angeles about three weeks ago. That took just over two years to complete. Uh, very difficult to, to get it done, but uh, it was done. And that, that district is raising uh, about another $11.5 million for LAD. There are now 59 of these, as I mentioned, and they're raising over $130 million a year. Uh, the folks are very happy with them. You can see, again, on part of that survey, 70% of them indicated that their destination was more competitive. 82 said they allowed for better marketing strategies. We have a district statewide funding our statewide tourism office in California that's based on the same model. Same history, right? Budgets cut, cut, cut. The state's cutting budgets, cuts the state uh, tourism monies. So in 1997, the CTTC was formed. California passed the California Tourism Marketing Act, again, by the state legislature, which is an assessment statewide. Assesses all hospitality-related businesses. It actually started just on uh, lodging and restaurant and other uh, tourism businesses and then was expanded to rental car agencies as well. It now raises about $50 million a year for the California Travel and Tourism uh, Commission. And you can see here there's a, just a few stats. It, with $50 million a year, California is very competitive in the marketplace in terms of getting its message out. The bulk of the money of the 50 million, about 40 of it comes from the rental car assessment. You can see here it's 79% rental car. The rest, uh, the bulk of the rest is accommodations, 13%, and then a few others. Um, California obviously um, has done well with this. Um, these are stats from the CPTC. They've increased their domestic share of the tourism market. 
from about 9.7 to 11.1 percent, um, and their budget is uh, the second largest in the U.S. Um, it tells you just a little bit of the story of what's happened. Um, in Montana, this is a little bit of research that we've done. I uh, showed seven districts formed under their state law. Um, in Billings, in particular, this, these were some successes that they had talked about, a lodging demand increase, a 4.3% increase, occupancy by three, and daily rates by 9.2%. I think when you hear some of Clay's numbers, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll see he's, he's even had numbers higher than that. But certainly, you can imagine when you've got more money, and this really tells the story, you can make a big difference. And here are the post Tourism Improvement District budgets compared with the pre-Tourism Improvement District budgets in these localities in Montana. And you can see the red uh, post and blue is the pre. Uh, very, very large differences, very large gains in terms of those budgets. Um, wanted to talk to you just very briefly about Jacksonville, Florida, because uh, they are now considering a Tourism Improvement District. Um, they get a small amount of the tourist development dollars. You can see this just shows you of the six cents how it's allocated. They get a little under uh, two cents. They get 70% of that final two cents that, that, that goes to Jacksonville. Essentially the same story. Their budgets have been declining. Some of their revenues have been taken away. When they look at themselves compared to some of their competitive set, you can see they're in the bottom uh, three here on the left-hand side of the chart. They wanted to figure out an answer to, to that problem. Um, here, compared against Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, Atlanta, and Charlotte, you can see what their budget looks like. Um, and the budget has been reducing. Uh, in addition, they get a comparison of how they were overall in the total tax on guests. And this is what uh, many of your jurisdictions are going to want to look at. How are you competitively with other jurisdictions? And you can see they're at about 13%. Uh, while many of their competitors are higher, uh, as high as 16 and a quarter, you can see uh, 15, 14. And a lot of folks ask me, how much is too much? And uh, I'm not sure we know the answer to that question, but we are seeing a lot of bureaus getting in that 16% range. Uh, that is not uncommon. LA with their new district is at 15 and a half. San Francisco, uh, I believe, is at 15 and a half. Anaheim is above that. We're seeing a lot of districts uh, come in in that sort of, that sort of range. Um, what they're proposing there, they actually were going to do tiers based on the room count of the hotels. 1% um, on their largest hotels and then 0.75 and then actually excluding some of the smaller properties, uh, those under 74. Um, that, is, that is not uncommon either, is to see these room count thresholds that look focused primarily on the larger hotels. It would raise uh, about 1.1 million for them and take their budget from 3.2 up to 4.3 million. So uh, with that, I uh, would like to uh, turn it over to Mr. Clay Vick, <coughs> Destination Napa Valley. Thank you. Mr.